Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your throne of grace. Humbly as we know how, Father, asking that even as we transact the information that is about to be received by us, even in the midst of our chaos today, we ask that you would be the ruler to rule and super rule in the affairs of men this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you and pray for this leadership as we move forward, as we continue to try to get understanding and to move towards solutions. Father, we ask that we continue in the grace that you have called us to this morning. And even though we understand that we've been inconvenienced, we'd like to take inconvenience and make it an inconvenience and convenience this morning. So Father, we ask that you be with us in this meeting this morning, that we don't do the finger pointing, that we understand that it's happened. Now, how do we move to solutions? And how do we let cool heads prevail this morning? Father, we ask that according to your grace and your mercy and your many blessings that have been bestowed upon us from heaven on high, that you be with us. Bless this leadership, pray for this leadership as they start this new journey. Father, we thank you in your name, Jesus' name, and let every heart say, Amen. Amen. This meeting is now called to order. Roll call by Trustee Rosen. Here. Trustee Here. Present. Trustee Here. Trustee Here. 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 Our rules to the general comments, which is normally uh, 30 minutes limited. Uh, if I can get a second. Motion by Trustee Brooks to. Motion by Trustee Brooks to suspend. <coughs> second by Trustee Jenkins. Madam Clerk, roll call. Trustee Williams. Trustee Williams. Trustee Brooks. Both sides. Trustee Bell. Both sides. Trustee Franklin. Both sides. Trustee Bell. Aye. Trustee Franklin. Both sides. Both sides. So before we get started, we're going to have a presentation by Aqua. Then after the presentation, we'll have questions and answers from the audience. But before we get started, I'd like to make a, uh, just a little talking points for today's meeting. I'd like to welcome everyone and thank them for coming. This has been a difficult week for all of us here in the village. We are all frustrated and anxious about the situation. I want to assure all the residents that my administration and I have been working diligently to make sure that everything that could be done is being done to rectify the water crisis. I have asked the representatives of Aqua to be here to explain what happened, what they are doing to remedy the situation, and where we go from here. There are several things I have asked of the company on behalf of the residents. One, we ask them to be vigilant in getting water to everyone affected. We ask them to get filters to all those affected. We ask them for an information center here from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. to give our residents first-hand and up-to-date information. We have requested that, that they provide residents with lead testing kits, smart alerts. We have asked them to hire a minority firm independent of their vendors to test the water and compare our results with theirs. We have asked them to test the village facilities which have been cleared so those facilities including our water tank are no longer part of the do not consume advisory. We have asked for and are being provided with daily updates. We have asked that they allow village rep representatives to participate in discussions with the IEPA and the ICC. With the passage and approval of the emergency declaration, staff is in contact with the Well County Health Department to see if they can offer assistance and is prepared to seek assistance from other state and federal agencies if necessary. For the record, my home is still affected, so I feel the pain the residents feel. This is no time for politics. We are one family, one community, and our main focus has to be the health, welfare, and safety of our residents. This is a time to unite our community and help and assist all of our neighbors. Your elected officials are speaking in one voice because we understand the importance of this issue. I hear that there has been false and misinformation spread throughout our community 
which is why we are holding this emergency meeting to assist us in providing our community with the correct and update information. I can only ask that you attend the meetings so you can hear for yourself the facts and the most current information. I want to thank the trustees, our clerk, and the entire administration for their help and support. So I want to set the record straight and be sure everyone knows the facts as they currently stand. My administration is doing all we can to get accurate information to everyone. And if there is something more we can do, please let us know. We are open to suggestions. I have invited representatives from Congresswoman Kelly's office to be here as well as other elected officials. I have received calls from neighboring mayors offering their support to our community. I want to thank them for their help. And at this time, I'd like to invite the spokesperson from Apple to come forward and give their presentation. I am requesting complete decorum from everyone. Please respect those who are coming to the podium. I will ask all of you to please silence your phone and give full attention to this matter so we can all be better informed about this issue. water systems that we operate as if our families drink it, 
bathe in it, and swim in it, because we do. We ourselves are customers of Aqua, just like you. Aqua Illinois' goal throughout this process has been to operate with complete transparency with regulators, elected officials, and most importantly, the community. And while the information might not be coming as quickly as many would like, and sometimes as much too fast as I would like, it's important that we only provide fact-based information to avoid confusion and misinformation from circulating. We are in a highly regulated industry, and there are a lot of variables at play, so I wish we could have provided more information earlier, but again, we thought the most important is share only fact-based information. I want to make this point clear. Your voice is heard, and we're going to resolve this issue as soon as we can. Now I'd like to provide you with a little bit of background information. If we go back to 2016, many of you might remember residents had concerns due to high water hardness and discoloration caused by high levels of iron in the water. At that time, we began with plans to transition University Park from well water to softened and filtered water from the Kankakee River. Before the transition, begin a new treatment process, <laughs> widely known to remove iron and rust, but also protect against lead. We documented and submitted the new treatment process to the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, IEPA, and we were able to transition the water supply from well water to Kankakee River water in January of 2018. Eight months later, when conducting IEPA mandated lead testing, some results showed slightly increased levels of lead. However, they still met the IEPA requirements. The treatment appeared to be working. There were very little complaints from discoloration, and the water was safe to consume for our customers. When we received the results on the next round, IEPA mandated, and that was on June 13, 2019, we were surprised to find that the 15 of 36 had tested with high levels of lead above the EPA action level criteria. As an extreme precaution, as I mentioned earlier, we issued a do not consume advisory for the entire water system, including all of University Park, Green Garden, and Melanie Townships. Now, over the past week, we've done an intensive, rigorous testing of our system and the properties throughout the community. We we're able to confirm that our water treatment facility water mains, service lines, and the source water coming to University Park do not contain lead. However, we have discovered that the treatment process implemented before we even switched water supplies over time has impacted the protective layer that existed inside the pipes of customers' homes, the solder connections, and inside fixtures inside customer homes allowing lead to potentially dissolve into the water. Most of the properties already removed from the do not consume order are properties constructed after 1986, the year that lead solder was banned by the US EPA. Those properties built after 1986 do not have lead within their plumbing system. Properties built before 1986, many of which still remain under the do not consume advisory, include the majority of the homes in the University Park's downtown section. Those homes may now lack the protective coating within their plumbing system, allowing lead to dissolve into the water. Now, Dr. Crockett is our technical expert, and he's going to elaborate more in a few minutes, but I want the public to be assured that this is not an issue with Aqua's service line or its water supply. Now, for those of you who have homes that have not been taken off, or for those of you that have homes that have been taken off and do not consume advisory, um, your water uh, never did have lead. Your water never had elevated levels of lead in your home because you don't have lead in your home. For those of you whose homes are still under the do not consume advisory, we are still working to assess if your water is safe to drink. It may be a few weeks until we know for certain that you can safely consume your tap water unfiltered. In the meantime, 
before we intend to continue alleviating the burden on you and your families as much as humanly possible. And here's how. We've delivered more than 15,000 cases of bottled water to your homes and businesses. We will continue to make sure that you have safe water until this is resolved. We have delivered or attempted to deliver water pitchers with lead filters to every home in the impacted area. And we have them here today for those who missed the delivery. These filters remove 99% of the lead. We are offering free water testing to anyone who wants it. You can pick up the testing kits here today and bring it back to the information center back here for the actual testing. It's done by an independent lab and we're using two separate independent labs for the testing results. And you can also call us to pick up the samples or you go to our website or call us. We'll make it as convenient as we possibly can for you. We launched a project, a project website, as the merit indicated, called waterfactsil.com, where you can sign up for email alerts and get the most up-to-date information. And we started a Waterfacts IL Facebook page and have been running paid advertisements to reach all impacted customers. We've also hired a street team to be out in the public and do door-to-door -door flyers as well as deliver water to customers. And they've been out six different times delivering water and flyers. And we are extending the information center to July 1st to ensure that residents get all the access and information and services that Aqua is providing related to this event. Now we met with the mayor several times and also recently shared information with the board members. And the mayor's made it crystal clear that he expects Aqua to do everything in its power to protect the residents of University Park and restore safe drinking water as soon as possible. He also relayed some of the community's concerns and we worked with the mayor to offer a few solutions to help lessen the impact we know this has caused and restore confidence in your water service. First, if you are ever under the Do Not Consume Advisory, whether you're on it now or not, your water and sewer charges for the month of June will be zero. Both for water and sewer service. That's not enough, that's not enough, that's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. I know this is not going to make up the concerns that you have and the inconvenience this has caused, but I believe it's important to make every effort to alleviate any burden on our customers. Second, Aqua will provide the village with testing results for the biannual lead testing that is required by the Illinois EPA. This information is already available on the EPA's website, but we will make sure that the University Park leadership and community members have this information going forward. Moving forward, I hope this will help us to regain your confidence. Several in the community, as a walk community, delivering water and working with our team, have expressed concerns for the safety of the University Park residents. Concerns that I share. We understand and we have always made the health and well-being of our customers our number one priority. Based on your feedback, Alpha is offering today not only the free lead testing for your drinking water, but Aqua will provide free lead blood testing to all residents within the impacted areas. We will also outside agency. We will also provide free lead testing for your homes. As you probably know, lead can be found in all parts of your environment: the air, the soil, children's toys, and paint in your home in an effort to live up to our promise of putting your safety first. We are offering this service to residents of University Park, Green Garden, and Moni Townships. And we have a table set up in the corner where you can get more information. And uh, Chris Lonnie, who's way back, he's got the paper back there, and Donna Alston, will be happy after the meeting, we'll stay here as long as you want, to get you some information that you can take with you to find out how do you uh, obtain that testing. And I hope that this demonstrates, in some small way, our commitment that we take your feedback very seriously, and we promise to work hard every day to restore the trust and bring you the safe drinking water that we promised and that you deserve. We are now going to further explain how this happened, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Crockett to talk more about the technical nature of the elevated water levels. Dr. Crockett is a PhD in environmental engineering, as a licensed professional civil engineer, 
He has 24 years working in the water industry. He previously served as the Deputy Water Commissioner for the City of Philadelphia. And he's an adjunct engineering professor at Drexel University. Dr. Proctor, would you please come up? Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, uh, Trustees. Good morning, community of the University Park. Could we please switch to the next slide, please? So, be I want to make sure you can see it. So, before we get started into all this, I want to make sure that everybody uh, is aware of how water is delivered to their home and the pieces that uh, are involved in delivering that water to your home. On well, the picture here, you're going to see that there are, the water comes from a source, whether it's river or well, is treated and then pumped in pipes we call water mains in the streets of your neighborhood. And then from those pipes in the streets, there's a pipe called a supply line or a service line that goes from the street into your home at the meter. From the meter then, your home plumbing takes over and it's delivered to your faucet or sink or any other fixture you have in your home. One thing I want to point out is where we believe the lead is, is in those circled areas uh, where the lead solder is located in homes that are built prior to 1986. Next slide, please. Lead was used to join copper pipes together. It was called, it's lead and tin. It's a mixture of lead and tin, and it was in something called lead solder that was commonly used to glue the pipes together when you had copper piping and plumbing in homes. If you live in a house, that is built before 1986, you, you probably have lead solder in your plumbing in your home. Unless it was renovated where they basically replaced all the plumbing. And there are some homes in this community we have found that have had that occur. If you live in a home built after 1986, it is probable that you do not have lead solder in your plumbing and the only lead that you may have is from some kind of fixture uh, that includes brass. Next slide. So this is a picture of what lead in the solder looks like. You're gonna hear a lot of people talking about where the lead comes from. So on this picture, you're gonna see the copper pipe, and you're gonna see this silver ring where the pipes are joined together. That is what is soldered. Now what you're gonna see in the bottom is there looks like a silver wire sticking there. That's how they put the solder into the pipe. They heat the pipe up and the solder gets, melts and, and gets sucked into the pipe and makes the bond and it dries. It's called sweating the pipe for, for people that do plumbing. Uh, this is a common technique uh, that's used in joining copper pipe together. So if you see this, not every solder is, has lead in it. After 1986, it was banned, so, but it's hard to tell by looking at it if it's lead or copper. And there are kits you can get to check it to see if it's lead or not. Next slide. Next slide. So I want to be crystal clear with everybody here where the lead is not coming from. Where it's not coming from. It's not coming from the source, which is the Kankakee River. There is not lead there. It is not coming from the water treatment plant where we treat the water. It is not coming from the water mains. We've tested the hydrants and water mains. There is no lead detected there. We do not have lead service lines in University Park. In fact, we've gone out to a couple homes, uh, and I want to thank the customers who allowed that so that we could even double confirm that it's copper piping in the street to the home. What we do know is that the lead is in other places. Please switch off. And that lead is in the solder. So how does the lead in that solder, that silver stuff in the piping, get into your water? <clears throat> well, water is a universal solvent. And what we mean by that is when you take water and you put sugar in it, it dissolves. Uh, the same thing happens with water and lead. Under certain chemistry conditions, when water comes in contact with lead, 
it will dissolve into the water, creating what we see today. In the case of this situation, in your situation, the water chemistry that we normally arrange to make sure that doesn't happen did not work as expected. Next slide, please. So what's happening here on that silver ring, that solder, if we looked inside the pipe, you would see that same silver ring. But what happens over time, when that was put in in the 70s and maybe 80s, a film of material builds up over top of that lead. That coating creates a barrier between the water and the lead. Prevent While they have gone away, they, they, a legacy that remains, or they're still in old, older homes. So these are things we're concerned about. Um, there is not a source of lead, and, and we have a lot of that on lead exposure, particularly older, and that's what we're really concerned with. Um, the data that sort of for our opinion on that, though, are long-term exposure. These are children that have been exposed um, throughout their entire life, but generally to higher concentrations of, uh, than, than the, the, you know, the standards that have been set by IEPA. There's where we have some pretty good information that has these neurodevelopmental endpoint problems. This is like deep IQ, decreased attention span. There's some newer information that's come out in the last 15 years that even lower concentrations could have some of these impacts. Again, it's term exposures. The studies that look at short-term exposures, sort of a transient spikes of lead, more equivocal, and, and they say that there's potential for an issue. Studies out there that says that those don't have these long-term effects. So there's there's not a lot of good to really inform our position on that, but the, the, the way that regulations look at this is the air on the side of it. We don't want any lead in our water line. And, and that the goal is to zero. We can't get the exposure to lead out of your systems because you get lead from your food, from the soil, from all these other legacy um, sources that are out there in the environment. But we want to get as low as possible. Um, with, with that, I'm going to turn it back. Um, first of all, I'm concerned about the whole um, uh, University Park resident at large. And I just recently found out that there will be a new grandfather, right? So uh, my daughter is only about six, seven months. Uh, and so six weeks, right? So what exposure did she uh, during this whole process? So if she was drinking water that was that this time frame, there may have been piles of lead in them. Those little piles that have been measured were those first samples. Um, unlike some of the other major pollen areas that have lead service lines, where the corrosive activities of that have given rise to lead that would have been for longer periods of time, it's less likely under the situation that we've got, concentrations that were actually consumed were as, as high as the number that have been shown there. But we know. Um, the, the key for, for you right, is to suggest get the blood testing done. Let's find what the exposure is. And then we can do characterize what that potentially could do. Generally, though, from our design knowledge that we've got, while none is no lead is really acceptable, as a grandfather, I would, wouldn't like that. Um, small, increased time, short period of time, are likely to have any adverse health effects. We know that from some studies where there's interventions where people had had some upsets at higher levels of lead, and then they said something's going on here, let's, let's do an intervention to do other um, more suitable conditions, and they find no neuro sort of long-term impacts from that. Well, should we uh, advise everybody to do an outdoor blood testing? I, you've got Aqua that says um, that they're willing to, to do that. So um, if, it were, if I were served by water, you know, I was in that area where um, you've got an older home concern there, test it, get it done. I, I wouldn't reuse the water. They proved to me that it was good. So I mean, these are these are the things that we've got data. Let's get the data and, and you know make things based on that. Thank you. Thank you. recognize. Yes, yes, Trustee. So this is your presentation. I have a question. Something that makes sense to me. Why in the world did the EPA only allow have to allow 90% of our water tests if there is no level that's safe? What does that mean? I agree. That, that has some issues uh, associated, and I believe that our goal is. 
to make sure that public water systems comply with national drinking water regulations. We also provide technical support upon request in many cases such as this. So with regards to Unity Park, we're working directly with the Illinois EPA, working with our experts in the Office of Research and Development in Cincinnati, and we have the premier Erosion and corrosion control experts working on the situation here. Um, we're looking at all the, the data that we've requested. We have. We're looking at all of the information before the switch, after the switch, providing recommendations uh, to Illinois EPA to uh, Illinois. Um, we are where we need additional information. We're requesting it and getting that information, and we're working way through that. Um, so. We will continue to do that. Um, we will continue to look at the data that comes in, and it will be can now on a weekly basis. We have requested additional parameters to be sampled, or rather rendered. Uh, the state has requested that. Aqua Illinois has agreed to do that. Um, and those additional parameters we want uh, data for um, will help us to help uh, University Park uh, and to evaluate the treatments. Um, I just wanted to let go and, and thank the mayor and the, and the council for inviting us um, and to let people know we will be we will provide support uh, to Illinois a and as well as uh, its recommendations and so forth. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, Deborah Taylor, public Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Deborah, and I actually have questions, um, which would be a two precautionary measure before you actually enter the process of living the water. Um, I heard over again that it is possibly older homes that were the channel for the lead piece into the water. That was what I saw over and over. The concern is that it's a precautionary measure. If that was the case, Aqua was given up of our village and the demographics. And also, where the older homes were, could it have possibly, been, this could have been eliminated by to older homes, especially since you know as much about it. And you know the possibility of that being channeled because of the older home impacted by whatever solution we're gonna to use to the water, the new water through our system. So as part of the requirements by EPA on how we do the testing, we are actually required to identify the holder homes and make the sampling pool that we sit from. And in fact, those teen uh, locations, we have the elevated results, were holder homes. So our, the point of that monitoring is to look. So as a precautionary, before you actually implement the water, could you have Samples from those homes, those older homes, that you knew the possibility was the higher possibility level being higher than they were. Was, have, I'm sorry. They were. And what was the outcome of all of that? We we showed a graph uh, above earlier prior to prior to adding that chemical sample that it passed the requirements for. EPA. Okay, so your family did what? I want you, could you repeat that? What the? So was? prior to the additional goal, as per our required thing, which we sample those same homes every. Every time we're requested to, as part of the schedule, those were below or met the regular requirement. When we had adults come back that we got last Thursday, it was from the same locations. We always hold to make sure that we have worst case scenario. Okay. It seems to me you have a chemical team. A chem you have a chemist, a team of, all right? Yes. So when your chemist should know the composition of the solution that you intended to use and should also know the, what the physical abilities are of that solution. So again, like James, when something happened here, someone missed the ball because they should have been able to 
and give you the possibilities of what could have been the situation. And I, someone missed it. Deb, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And I'm the one that sent you the 100 petitions from the residents yeah. saying they wanted this meeting. Yeah, Mr. Del Toro talked about having some of the industry's most experts working on that. And we were experts in trying to do get this this new chemical in and get clear as water we possibly could to customers. And we be on the ground as we move through this process. Yeah, I'm not going to be anywhere else. I'm going to be sure. Thank you. Next question, Jada Williams, then we'll go to the people in line. Good morning, everyone. Um, Martin is kind of similar to, to Taylor's because of the discovery made in August of 2018. And even though you say that it was a small number of homes that did test, found the discovery, less more when it comes to our lives. So when you discovered this, my question is why were more tests done more fully, not all the way to June, because now our children, our grandchildren, ourselves, we have consumed this land. How soon were our schools, our college campus, our daycares, how soon were they notified? Our children are our greatest priority. And they didn't consume this water all year. In the parks, everywhere. And you say it could be fixed, and it sounds like in, in a short period, but if it's not, what plan B? Where do we go from here? Um, I'm going to try to answer all three of your questions as, as, as uh, easily as I can here. So first, we, we have any results from August till June, so we don't know how long that was there. And that we shared that information. Two, two we said we don't know August to June. Was it so, to ask if we sampled the schools. Am I okay? So we have gone out to the schools, tested them. I'm, I'm waiting for results to come back. We've been working, uh, the health department, looking at daycare centers and everything else. We want to make sure people safe and that they, if they are, they should do not, cons they should not use that water from drinking. I think your third question, I'm sorry. Um, you, your plan B, because you say that would, it sounds okay, like so you're saying we're going to move quickly, but if, if so, it's not, we'll so we We've involved now experts who are looking at this. We've actually taken, thanks to one of uh, one of the uh, members of the community, we were actually able to section a pipe out of their home, send it to this expert laboratory. We're doing all kinds of tests to make sure that the solution that we have is a long-term solution. If we see anything that suggests otherwise, those experts are going to give us instruction on what needs to be done to change that so it is a long-term solution. So we have a long-term solution now that we believe will work. We'll continue to work with experts, EPA, IA, to make sure that that will continue to work. If something isn't right, we will have a plan C, D, E, but that is based on the data that our experts are going to generate. Thank you. Mayor, again. 